Hi, I'm going to do a quick video for you on uh, linkage. Uh, not so much setup, but just uh, hooking it all together and getting your control surface working. So, first thing we usually end up with is our little easy adjuster, I guess that's what some of them call them, our servo arm, and our linkage. Well, when you get your servo arm, the only thing you're going to have is these little small um, holes right here. So the first thing you're going to need to do with that is going to be find a small drill bit and drill that out. And you can actually, you don't need to use power tools or anything, you can actually grab this and spin it through that horn well enough to where it'll actually uh, get large enough for your easy adjuster to fit through there. So then, I like to use a little bit of Loctite on my easy adjusters because some control horns will not allow you to screw this nut all the way down to the point where it will hold without binding that control horn. So I'm going to take a little bit of Loctite. I use either the uh, the blue or the, the green because I like to be able to get them off as well. If you go and use red or any kind of permanent Loctite, you may not be able to get those nuts off without destroying them. So, I usually take and put a small drop on a surface, uh, preferably uh, non-permeable, and I'll just go ahead and just put the threads in there and capillary action will actually pull that Loctite up into those threads for you. So you don't have to sit there and mess around with it. Just get a little bit on there. You don't need that much. And I'm actually going to wipe some of the excess off right here. So the threads are basically wet with it, but they're not soaked in that crap. So, also something I like to do is, this may not work for some of you guys that are, you know, really running your servo to, uh, to extremes as far as travel is concerned, but uh, I like to put the Easy Adjuster on the inside of this arm. That way, there's not so much of a twisting force on that bearing that's in here. So I don't know if it helps or not, but it's just something that I do. I try to keep it all lined up with that main bearing. You know, if you have this turning here and you have your easy adjuster on the outside, you get a pretty good twist on that servo. So if I could keep it as, as lined up with the servo as possible, that I would think that would be helpful. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and put this little guy on here. that way okay and I'm gonna use a piece of an old uh, push rod to use as a wrench I'm gonna go ahead and back this screw out a little bit more so I can fit it through there okay and I need something else I have a pair of hemostats over here that I'm gonna use Just go ahead and twist it down on there, like that. And remember, we don't want to over tighten this. I would bring it to where it stops and then back it off. If you have a kind of a thick servo arm, you need to back it off maybe about a quarter turn to make sure that your servo arm is not locked up in your easy adjuster. See, this is. I guess it's probably a little bit too loose. So I'm going to tighten it back up just a hair. And that's probably pretty good right there. Uh, yeah. We want to leave it loose enough so that uh, our control surface will move freely but not so loose that it has a lot of slack in it because if you have too much slack you might have problems with flutter and anybody that's flown any EDFs or any high speed airplanes know what that can do. So there we go, pretty good, I think I'm going to work with that. That's still looser than I would like.
but for video's sake, we're going to go with it. All right, so your push rod. You're going to need to make one of these guys, and instead of going and buying all that stuff that these hobby stores sell, I just keep mine relatively short so I don't have to run it through tubes. If you do have to run it uh, a distance, you can use uh, very small zip ties and just kind of loop it around and then stab that zip tie into your foam and hot glue it. It'll, it'll hold it pretty well. So what I use for servo rod or push rods is you're going to like this. This. This is just regular galvanized steel wire. It is one millimeter. So you can get a roll of this for very cheap. And I've, I've been working on this roll for quite a while, actually. Um, so here you go. Turn it up right side up so you can see it. And that's what I'm using for control rods. So then what I do is I just take a little piece of this and if I want to make a Z-bend in it, I'll just take my handy dandy hemostats right here, grab a hold of this wire, and I'll make one bend straight down. And then I'll grab it up here, make another bend, and there you go. So, and that's been working for me, you know, all the way up into the uh, 400 size planes. If you keep them short enough, you, you don't have much problem with them. Now, if you're making a, a good speed demon or something like that, then uh, you may consider using something a little bit thicker. But these work well, uh, especially for me, if you uh, are building like a 3D plane or something like that, and you tend to get in a little you know, a little bump or something like that that often happens with those. Before it strips your servo, oftentimes it'll actually just bend the control rod and you can bend it right back and throw the thing right back in the air. So, not too shabby. All right, so then you've got your servo. And one thing that you'll wanna do is go ahead and get a power system that will allow you to plug this thing in and get it centered. So I'm just going to use this uh, little Fly Sky uh, receiver here that it, you know I put this in some of my little small park flyer planes, but uh, I haven't tried it in any larger aircraft yet. Um, it might take me a while to get around to trusting it for that, but I'm sure it's probably fine. So we will, we'll just put it in uh, any channel that uh, we have uh, trimmed out. So that's in good, okay. And let me get an ESC over here. So I'll just go ahead and plug that into channel three like it would normally be, wrong way. Now that that guy is in there, we'll go ahead and turn on our transmitter first and make sure that our number one, which is usually your aileron channel, have a switch warning, is on and make sure our ailerons are centered. Okay, ailerons are centered, transmitter's on. So now we'll just plug this in to center our servo. Okay, now that our servo is centered, we're going to think about which way that this servo is going to go into this airplane. So in this airplane that I'm building now, the servo is going to go in this direction. So, all right, well, let me, let me think about that for a second. Now, actually, it's going in this direction now that I'm looking at it. So we could put our control horn on just like this and try to get it as centered as possible and that looks pretty good right there we can go into the sub trim and all that if we really need to but I'm gonna leave this in this direction because 
If you have this canted slightly towards the control surface when you hook it up, you'll actually get, you know, since this is mounted on the top of the wing, I'll actually get more up throw in the aileron than I will down throw. So what that's going to do is offer a little bit of aileron differential and uh, that will help uh, the plane make a little bit more coordinated turns. There won't be such a, a, a tendency for the airplane to slip every time you give it an aileron input. So I'm just going to leave it like that and uh, as a matter of fact I think my other one is already on the wing and set up that way. I just haven't, uh, haven't glued that servo down yet. So there we go. So then all you have to do is just grab your your uh, servo screw, which will be in your little your little bag of parts here. This will be this little guy. So take him, put him on my screwdriver, which has been magnetized. So and we'll go ahead and screw that down. And we're just going to snug it down. We don't need to. We don't need to monkey fist these because um, you can strip them out very easily, and that really sucks. So there we go. All right. So there's our servo with servo horn, low rate. So there's high rate, and look at with full throw, it's not even touching the case anywhere. So we're good to go with that. There's no. There's no reason to mess with that. So I'm going to leave that one like that, and uh, then what I'm going to do is show you this wing that I've already set up right here. So can you see that pretty well? set up on here so that servo is going to be glued down right here and uh, there it is connected to the control horn on this left aileron this is going to be a biplane so over here there's going to be another uh, there's going to be another little linkage that goes up to the top aileron but we can cover that later so once that's glued down we'll be ready to go on this aileron um, one thing I would recommend though, as you can see this one's been glued down before, we'll have to clean that off with a razor blade first, uh, is figure out, you know, make sure your aileron is perfectly aligned with your wing and everything with no uh, incidents to it at all. And draw, just kind of outline your servo with a pencil. And then pick your servo up and where you see that outline, take a razor blade and just cut a, a little bit of that paper, it doesn't have to be a lot, cut it up cut a little bit of the paper out and uh, put hot glue on your servo and then you know press it down like you like you normally would that way your servo is actually biting into your foam and not just your paper because that paper I've had a lot of trouble with it uh, especially on Adam's board which is you know one of the reasons we use that number one it's cheap number two the paper comes off easy when we need it to um, so uh, if you have a plane that's got a lot of force being put on the ailerons or just takes a lot of bumps and you know bangs and all that um, that paper will come up and then you're you'll notice your ailerons or you're not getting full throw because the paper lifts in one direction or the other or else you end up with a really bad flutter um, which has happened to me before with a wing where it completely uh, disintegrated in the air um, and destroyed a battery pack and a motor I might add so I would I would take a little bit of that out right there, and uh, you might even consider reinforcing that area by embedding a, maybe a piece of a gift card or or a, a piece of plywood if you wanted to do that if you wanted to go a little bit heavier. Um, but okay, so that's uh, all I've got for this video. I hope this helps somebody out there, and have a great day. Have a good day of flying.